Say it now. Say the obvious prediction right now. The Stars are going to win the Stanley Cup. Hey guys, welcome back to StarCast Trick Marks. This is the official Dallas Stars podcast of the Hockey Podcast Network. Thank you to DraftKings Sportsbook for being our sponsor. As always, we appreciate them. Go use that promo code THPN. And maybe you can go and bet that the Dallas Stars are going to win that President's Trophy, guys. I think that would be really cool. Go and do that. And uh, as always, thank you to DraftKings Sportsbook. But we have a very special guest here today, but we have even more special news that came out this morning as well, which I don't know if it was a little unseen or expected. I think it was a little, probably a little bit expected, but uh, we'll go ahead and get straight into it. We have today with us Joey Erickson from the Locked on Stars podcast. Joey, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you boys having me on. Excited to, to talk some Stars hockey. No better time, man. We're all ramping up for the playoffs and uh, the Stars are on a heater. So <laughs> let's keep it going. And then, of course, we've always we've always uh, got Chris and James here as well to give their expert analysis and insights more so than my own because they're much smarter than me. Expert, yeah. Expert, you're an expert. Chris, come on. Much smarter is the important part there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I got sweet potato fries. I'm good. You can call me stupid all you want. Uh, anyways, uh, so first, before we get into the obvious news uh, for today, uh, Joey. I'd like for you to kind of talk about yourself just a little bit, just because uh, there may be some members of our audience that don't really know you, like your personal background and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Can you just talk about yourself just for a little bit, just like for us to kind of get to know you? Yeah, I'll give you a little elevator speech, uh, I guess. But um, uh, born and raised in uh, Dallas, Texas. I guess I can give you my city since we're probably all familiar with the DFW uh, area. But uh, from Richardson, Texas, um, just grew up a Stars fan, of course. I, I played hockey from the age of three all the way up till uh you know like 20 <laughs> i mean i still play every once in a while uh but but just for fun i, I went to to st cloud state university which is uh located in, in st cloud minnesota it's about an hour north of the cities repping the huskies uh sadly they didn't make the tournament uh this season but i i went there to to become a broadcaster or at least pursue broadcasting. And uh, I did play by play uh, at St. Cloud state for women's hockey, basketball. I, I did some men's games, a little bit of everything while I was uh, there. And then uh, of course, graduated. 
I uh, went back home. I was sick and tired of the Midwest. So I went back home for a year and uh, was a, a part-time producer at, at 105 Through the Fan, which was great to get my feet wet in the industry, as they call it. And then, um, yeah, I guess the Midwest was calling my name back. So uh, I, I came up to uh, Wisconsin, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. I'm currently the the play-by-play uh, broadcaster for the Chippewa Steel in the North American Hockey League. So, um, yeah, just kind of be beginning my my broadcast uh, career here, and uh, we'll see where it takes me. And then, of course, I, I jumped on Locked On Stars this year, uh, just kind of out of nowhere, actually. But uh, really, really thrilled that uh, I've been able to to kind of take over for uh, Dane, who was phenomenal before me. So, just trying to, I guess, keep the legacy moving. So. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and I picked a good season, I guess, with, with the Stars being extremely, extremely good. Yeah, when, when we first started this pod, we started this pod in like literally in the bubble playoffs of 2020. Okay, right? yeah. Like the, the 2020 draft was one of our first episodes mm-hmm. that we did. And from th- that was probably the absolute best time for us to start our podcast. So maybe with you starting locked on stars maybe we can say that the stars are going to win the stanley cup or at the very yeah. least go to the final maybe <laughs> <laughs> i would love that I, I would uh it would be good for the show so <laughs> i'm not opposed to it but uh for the fan in me yeah i would be i would be extremely giddy about it and uh i'm sure you and uh, and all the other stars fans out there still have uh just some some bitter tastes uh, of that 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 bubble cup that <laughs> that happened <Uh-oh. laughs> they're so close uh, but uh, it takes a it takes a lot to get it done. It's been three years now that we've lost in the playoffs to a Stanley Cup champion. We lost to the Blues in 2019, mm-hmm. obviously lost in 2020, and then last year. So just we've been so close yet so far, and I'm really hoping that uh, this is the year they can finally turn it around. So, but uh, speaking of the North American Hockey League, uh, out here in the middle of nowhere, West Texas, we've got the Odessa Jackalopes. So, oh yeah. And I, I'm out there every once in a while. I kind of go to a couple games uh, every two weeks or so. It's I have a bunch of fun going up there. So it's uh, it's awesome you're getting your feet wet with the the Chippewa Steel up there in Wisconsin. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the North American Hockey League is is pretty great, especially down south. Uh, well, just the the barns are nice, <laughs> like a lot nicer than like Minnesota team. There's a, there's a few, and that's not a knock against any of these teams. It's just everything's bigger in Texas. So <laughs> even down right. there, and, and the headquarters is down there, of course, uh, in Dallas, uh, the north uh, where the Stars practice, of course, uh, out there in Frisco. So yeah, they the, they got the the real estate to to do some pretty big barns, and um, I, I know. So in, in 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 Dallas, Lone Star right now, they're like the top team in, in the North American Hockey League. They're completely just obliterating everybody. So <laughs> um, even Oklahoma, I mean, they won the, the championship last year. So it's a good league and, and you get a lot of good players. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of players on my team that um, – are expected to be drafted here in the summer. And uh, I know there's been some Dallas star scouts that have came to watch one of our goaltenders. So um, there's a, there's a lot of NHL scouts that come to uh, our games and just throughout the league that are looking at some of these uh, potential prospects, which is, it's pretty cool, which you don't get to see a ton of. So. Yeah. And my job out here kind of made me move out here and I would have never guessed this, but, uh, and maybe I can pull your strings and maybe, you know, the answer, mm. Do you know, what current NHL goalie used to play for the Odessa Jackalopes. Oh, Odessa. I would not know. Not at it's all. One of, the, one of the biggest names you would never guess. One of the biggest names like Martin Brodeur. <laughs> current, current. current. NHL. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Who is it? Ryan. Current. Uh, Vasilevsky. <laughs> That's not a very amazing guess. Connor Hellebuck. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would have okay. never guessed. I would have never guessed. Of yeah. All I people. forgot he was in the null. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good nugget for you. That's a good nugget. Yeah. I'll have to use that tomorrow on my broadcast. <laughs> and, then, and then, like, uh, I actually had to go in because I was curious. I, I went and looked mm-hmm. up like Brian Suter was in the NAHL with the mm-hmm. development program at one point. Uh, Rope Hintz apparently was in the, the league at one point as well, which I was <laughs> shocked to hear about. So it, it, mm. it's it's really cool. So yeah, sometimes but, people just make pit stops <laughs> on their way to higher know. levels. Yeah. Well, Chris James, I guess I have to ask you how y'all are doing. How are y'all doing? Great it's Friday. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> I just got off of work and came straight here. I mean, I haven't even had dinner yet. That's why I'm eating pizza. Oh, poor James. 
And also, you see, like, I got my. It's kind of nice. some dinner too. The barbecue sausage, some peas, and sweet potato fries. And James, you would you would be appreciative of this. Look at that. Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Exactly. Very jealous. Okay. Uh, well, let's just jump right into this, guys. We, uh, the biggest news of the day, and unexpected, but also expected at the same time. I honestly did not know this when it when uh, someone told me this, but Maverick Borg has been called up to the Dallas Stars from the Texas Stars. And something that I missed that I was un unsure of about, but Jim Nell was apparently on Edmonton radio and said that Maverick Borg was going to be called up. And I totally missed that. So I was a, a little bit caught by surprise when this happened, but every, there were a couple of others in the X community that was not. So what do y'all think this means for Maverick Borg? Is this just because we got some players hurt? Uh, is this just to get his feet wet and see, you know, maybe he sticks up with the club for the NHL playoffs? Does he get sent back down? There's a lot of questions here, but just initial thoughts from him getting pulled up. What do y'all think? Yeah, well, he's definitely playing. Pete, De Pete DeBoer said as much in his uh, in his interview today during practice, so he's for sure playing. Um, they're not for sure what line on just yet, but it also makes me think that Sagan is probably a little bit more hurt than we'd like him to be. Um, so he's probably going to be a little bit more in and out. Um, but it's going to be awesome to see him up here. It's going to be really good for him to get at least a taste of the NHL. Uh, if worst case scenario happens and he needs to be called up during playoffs to – to fill in for some hurt bodies, but yeah, it's, it's going to be really exciting. It's looking like he's going to play next to Stankovan who uh, he played with all year in Cedar park. So I'm really excited just to see what happens and I, it'll be good for us to have some more, uh, some more rested players for the game against Colorado on Sunday too. It's just, yeah. it's exciting. I, I, I think the big thing, if, if the stars go deep in the playoffs, which they're shooting to do and which they're expected to do, honestly, they're, they're going to need more forwards coming through. We saw it in the bubble playoffs. By the time we made it to Tampa, we had lost an entire fourth line. I mean, it, there was no fourth line anymore. So those, those depth players in the AHL are very big pieces for a deep run. And that's been the the great thing about this season is that the stars do have depth to flex. <laughs> it feels like for the for the first time in a while. And I was certainly a, a bit shocked by the 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 news, but uh, of course it's well earned. I mean, he's leading the American Hockey League <laughs> this season. He's just uh, completely lighting it up. So I, I'm excited to to see what uh, he, he can bring to the lineup. And as you mentioned. Uh, going through a grueling playoff run. If you think they're going to go, what, 20, 25 games, guys are going to miss some games just being banged up. Look, Sagan is not going to be 100% for the rest of the season. That's just what it's going to be. And frankly, he's probably not 100% in general at all times, <laughs> just with uh, the amount of wear and tear that's been on his body. So just having a guy that can step in at any moment to provide you a uh, some minutes is, is huge. And look, Rope Hens is a guy, as much as we love him, he's due to miss two, three games <laughs> at, at some point during a playoff run, just because he, he can be a little bit fragile <laughs> on occasion. But um, it, yeah, they can flex the depth finally. And uh, the great thing about it too is I just think the Stars don't have to worry, even if like Sagan's out to some degree, even though we saw the Duchesne and Marchment just really struggled while he was out. Like they just have other lines that can produce at such a high level that it's not like a big blow where it would have been a, a few seasons ago. Yep. That's definitely the, the, the best aspect of this team. And it, it's actually crazy. The stars kind of have five good lines right now that are <laughs> active on the roster. I mean, one's on IR with the Donov, but you could have a fifth line of the Donov Bork and Delandria. And that that's like a solid line, actually. Like that's, that could be a third line on most hockey teams. And so the, the biggest question with this call up was why, why did this happen? I guess, because the, it, it seemed like he was going to keep Borg down. Th that just seemed to be the thing that was going to happen. We stars fans had been begging for it for the last couple of months, especially after we saw the success that stink oven has had. Now he, he's kind of trailed off the last couple of weeks on the offensive side not letting he was nothing like he was in that one San Jose game, which was ridiculous. 
But the, the thing that has kept Stankoven up there, and we'll keep him in the lineup, he's not going anywhere, is his defensive prowess. So it, it's even when he's not producing offensively, he is doing it defensively. So what do you all think that Maverick Bork needs to do defensively to maybe change Jim Nell's mind, force his hand, and maybe say, hey, this guy is not going anywhere. He's staying here, period. I'm not sure there's much he could do with how the team is set up right now, just especially the fourth line, because that's kind of where you look at for someone to get in right now. The fourth line has been spectacular with Steele and Fox and Smith. That has looked amazing, especially the past couple of weeks. They've just been on a tear. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the rest of the roster, and, and all, all I think is someone has to get hurt, like for him to get into the lineup. And I, I think it will be a bit Stan Coven S2 where do you really want to bring him up and play him on the fourth line? I, I don't think that makes a ton of sense because of his ability. Y you want him to be on, let's say, a, a top six role, so to speak, even though the stars are so deep, it doesn't really matter. It's like 1A, 1B with <laughs> some of their trios this season. But do you really want to bring him up and, and play limited minutes uh, along with like Chris, uh, uh, Craig Smith, excuse me, and Radic Foxa? If anything, you're you're going to bring him up to, to play him with Duchesne and Marchment, right? If if uh, if Sagan's going to, to get some rest here down the stretch, you want to put him in a role where he can be successful. And plus, it, it just comes with trust in the defensive zone where Stan Coven has a, a lot of trust and what you see with really good players, especially young ones. And, and Bork, I, I think, will certainly have this characteristic to his game. When he doesn't have the puck, he is really, really hungry to get it back. <laughs> That's what Stan Coven does. He doesn't have it on his stick. As you mentioned, why he's stuck in the lineup, even though he's not producing or at least picking up points. Um, he's a, a very effective player because of his forechecking ability the the way he closes out on defenders and he uses his stick well um, and he gets in shooting lanes he gets in passing lanes he he's not a lazy defender by any stretch of the imagination um, and if Port can somewhat emulate that then he'll, he'll probably stick in the lineup but as I mentioned I don't know if he's gonna stick for the rest of the year because do you really want to bring him up and play him in a fourth line role as James also alluded to that has been cooking lately too. <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of set that question up for y'all just to make sure that that Stars fans un understand that this is probably not going to stay. And uh, as cool and as excited as we are to see him up here, because he, if there's anybody other than Stankoven within the that wasn't in the league that deserves it, it's uh, obviously Maverick Bork. Both of those guys would just fed off of each other. And then there was the the worry that when Stankoven appeared to like he was going to stay with the big club, he wasn't going to go back down. Everyone was like, oh, well, Borg is going to tail off now because he doesn't have someone to pass the puck to or whatever or skill player to play with. That hasn't been the case. Mm -hmm. he, he has continued to light up the AHL. He has led the an AHL in scoring since Stankoven got called up. And he's made uh, uh, Matei Blumel look like a ridiculous player down there in the AHL as well. Oh, he so is. He, he just, he just yeah. found somebody. <laughs> he just found somebody else to pass the puck to. And he's made that person better. So that's it. He, he's been excellent this season. And I just want to curb stars fans hopes that he's going to stay because honestly, in the long run, Stankoven is, I think this is the best thing for him is to stay in the NHL because he's got that defensive prowess that maybe Bork doesn't have as much, but I think Bork would gain a lot more by being the best player on a team that might be going to the playoffs. I should be checking on the AHL roster right now and seeing if they're in the playoffs, but I have no idea. But I think that would do him a lot more benefit being the like the guy going into a, a, a major playoff like that. So yeah. I definitely agree. This is mostly for a, a little bit of a trial run for the playoffs in case someone gets hurt. I think he would probably be your number one guy who you'd want to get up there even before Dodonov maybe for a top six kind of role. Um, it's also, I, I feel like, a little bit of a reward for Bork, a, a guy who's come up in our system and has done it just the right way, too. I mean, we drafted him, and he played that first year in the AHL and probably didn't live up to as much hype as he got right out of the gate. 
and he, he he got significantly better this year and worked on stuff and not just offensively. Obviously, offensively is the one you see with the insane numbers he's putting up right now. But he didn't play penalty kill at all last year for Texas. And now he's on the penalty kill as well and is known as a true two way guy, good playmaker who has a solid shot and can score when he needs to. So he's really it, it's also a reward for him for getting better, rounding out his game, and becoming just an overall great hockey player. You look at Maverick at Bork right now, there's not a weak spot to his game, really. Yeah, it's crazy the step he's taken. Uh, just just in terms of his stats line from last year and this year, last year, 70 games had 47 points, and this year in 66 has 72 points. Yeah, quite the jump. I... I I, so I guess the thing we should also talk about is obviously the the reason why he got called up and we we know it now because we we had to wait for the wait for practice to see how the lines kind of came up. Obviously it's Sagan. That's the reason why he got called up. Sagan is going to take some rest as he deserves. He's an he's a vet now. He's actually on the older side, the older side now. He's only 31 or 32 or whatever it is. But um who I guess you put you guys have probably seen the lines, but do you like that line that he is currently being played on? He's going to start with uh, the captain and stank oven. So that means for Johnston, the Johnston is getting thrown up into that top six and he's going to be on that line where Sagan should be. Uh, what are y'all's thoughts on those two forward lines, the middle six guys? Yeah, well, yeah. I certainly don't mind it. <laughs> I, I just, I, I think whoever you put 53 with is going to thrive just because he makes others better. <laughs> I mean, I, I plain and simple. Um, I, I talked about it this week a bit on, on my show, just like, is he like a top 20 player in the national hockey league at this point? Just, I mean, yeah, his, his numbers aren't gaudy, right. Of, of some of the guys in the top 25 in scoring, but just most nights or at least in the last month, like he's the best player on the ice every time he steps out on the sheet <laughs> and he, he's made Ben like extremely, extremely good, like really, really good. <laughs> and um, also you have to give Stan Coven some credit to that for, for kind of jumping in and completing that trio because they had some trouble finding a, uh, a, a winger to, to go along with them. But I, I think that will be really good in, in terms of helping Duchesne and Marchment be effective and be more productive when Sagan is out of the lineup. And it just, it makes sense to put Bork and, uh, and, and Stan Coven together. Right. I, I think they're going to be like the Sedin twins for a long time here in Dallas. Like don't, don't break them up unless, unless you're proven otherwise. Plus um, I, I, I really do trust Pete DeBoer. I think he just pushes the right buttons most of the time. <laughs> um, and we can get into the defensive talk sometimes and the pairings there, but uh, up front and uh, the buttons he pushes and shakes the lines. He's not afraid to do it, which we've seen this season. Look, uh, experiment with anything. Uh, the The stars have averaged over four goals a game here in the last month. Like, I, I don't, I just, I don't think you can go wrong at this point. <laughs> it's a game of interchangeable parts. Yep. Agreed. And Johnson is definitely the center that has proven he can play with anybody too. We saw him play mm -hmm. with that top line where he had really good success. Um, so it just makes sense that you throw him with that second line. He's going to find a way to play with those guys. He's just, He's so smart. He knows where to go on the ice. And it, it seems like he could read people's mind. It doesn't matter who he's playing with. So definitely agree with you there. And it's going to be a lot easier. I feel like for Bork when he's got Stankov in there and he's got the giant piece of meat that is Jamie Ben mm -hmm. if he needs it. So I think it'll make him most comfortable. I think it's going to be interesting because Jamie Ben is going to absolutely protect both of those guys. He, he has not been the same rough house, Jamie Ben. I'm going to get in your face if you dare touch one of my players kind of kind of guys now. But if something does happen, he will answer the bell. So yeah, that's but he can. And, <laughs> and, and, yeah, exactly. Point. And, and it seems just like right now, like anybody that starts with Ben tends to be a really good player, right? Yeah. Johnston, that was the immediate chemistry that he had when he first got to Dallas last season was it was with Jamie Ben. And that was a bit surprising because yeah, Jamie Ben is, is a skilled player and he was a more skilled player when he was younger, but Johnson has got like more, you know, more talent in his little pinky and more skill in his little pinky than Jamie Ben probably has in his whole arm. 
So it, it, it was just interesting to see that. But the you know, Ross just, Trophy winner, <laughs> yeah, Disrespect. 87, 87 points. And 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 it, I'm not gonna go there, not gonna go there. McDavid but anyways, wishes he could win an Art Ross with Mick David points. wishes he could, win he wishes Ross. he could do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true skill. That, yeah, come on, man. Is true. Okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But like, point being, Stankoven started with Ben, Johnston started with Ben. And now we're going to get to see Maverick Bork start with Ben, the, assuming that the lines are going to stay the same for tomorrow night. So I, I just think that Jamie Ben's got something about him that eases younger players down. And it, it's really good thing from the captain to be able to show that leadership for those young guys. Another little interjection of what Bork might be a good thing for is that tomorrow is definitely a trap game for the stars. I mean, you're <laughs> yeah. playing a matinee at two 30 against the Blackhawks who are way out of it. And you've got Colorado on the other end that, I mean, that that's the game for the central division right there. And you've got this trap game in front of it. Maybe Bork having a little extra energy in there. Guys pay a little bit more attention to what you might otherwise pass up on, on a matinee game. So maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of strategy from Jim Nil, perhaps. Well, what I the the one thing I I will say about all of this is I I really wish that we could have seen a line of Bork, Stankoven, and Johnston. I know that we'll we were it. all hoping for mm. that. We'll see it, it soon. But, well, we'll see it soon. It, it it is the next number one line for the Dallas Stars. Let's be honest. Like that, that's going to happen at some point. But I was really hoping that it was going to happen. But if it's 0-0 zero, zero halfway through the game tomorrow, they'll be together. <laughs> maybe. Honestly, maybe. Pete's going to be like, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Put the kids out like, there. Talk about going nuclear with your young, skilled players. That, that'd just be fantastic. Yeah, that would so. blow up Star's Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that would absolutely blow up Star's Twitter. So uh, one thing I do want to jump into a little bit as well, Joey, and you kind of mentioned it in your last episode that Johnson is the elite of the elite at this point, right? Mm -hmm. He, I argued in our last episode that I would put him as our MVP of the season. And, and I know that, you know, Duchesne would probably get some votes for that. Obviously Miro would get some votes for that as well. Maybe even Harley would with his explosion in offense, but for, for me, Johnson has been the most consistent player and he's raised his game at the most important time of the season. And hopefully he can keep the going into the playoffs, but it, he has been consistently good in every facet of the game. Like he play, he plays on the penalty kill. He plays on the power play. He does the defensive things, right? He seems to make one or two good defensive plays all the way around. He is a full 200 foot player in, he doesn't get enough accolades for what he deserves. And I even was going to the point of saying, well, maybe he's the next Yerry Lettinen for this club. So what do y'all think about him being the MVP of this season for, for this team? Yeah, I like it. I, 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 I do. I, I, I kind of agree with you there. And as you mentioned, Duchesne early on, especially just with, all the, the GWGs he had, he, he was kind of lightened up. And yeah, I think I think Harley deserves to be in that conversation too, especially when Miro went down and just the way that he has uh, just elevated his play. But yeah, for, for my money, Johnston has probably been the most consistent player and the, the most uh, effective and has had the most impact on the Dallas Stars this year. Like, like I kind of mentioned a moment ago, I feel like he's just elevated the play. Uh, of Jamie Ben, and he, he has certainly helped Logan Stankoven um, in, in his young career. And, and this is all too with uh, a point in the year where I think he had two goals in like 20 games at some point. Like he had like a, a mini slump kind of there in the middle of the year. And now he's the, the first 30 goal scorer for the Dallas Stars. <laughs> and, and yeah, he, he's doing it at, at the perfect time. And but uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, he, his case is, is probably best out, out of anybody else on the Stars to be the, the the MVP this season. And he's been on an incredible run. And and just most nights, I just laugh watching games because I'm like, dude, this guy's just dominating. He, he's just straight up dominating the game. Like, look at the other night with, with the David on the ice. Like, Johnston looks to be like, he can take over a little bit. And, and this is not a knock on McDavid. He's the best player in the world. Okay. I don't want to give strays to the, <laughs> the best player on, on the planet, but he's just like taking over games. And you look at some of the advanced numbers, he's just phenomenal in that aspect. And all the names he joined 
um, like the elite names he joined by scoring 30 before his 21st birthday. Like he is in some really, really good company. Um, and it's scary to think about for opponents or anybody outside of this Dallas Stars world about what he can become. And this is just two years. <laughs> um, and it's just, I, I don't see why it wouldn't get bigger or get better. He's going to get stronger. He's going to get more. Um, he, he's just going to get more playing time. And, and, and you mentioned power play. He doesn't even get a ton. I feel like because he's kind of been on that second unit. <laughs> he's not a featured, I should say, a featured point on, on the power play. So man, when that happens, it's like, man, you, you take off all the training wheels. Like it is over <laughs> for the league. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like what you're saying about saying how, uh, it seems like he can take control of games because it definitely feels that way, especially when the team isn't playing as good. Mm -hmm. He finds a way to to drag them with him. I mean, it's been a couple of games, but obviously the one you think about is the San Jose game where just him and Stankoven just decided, no, we're not going to lose the San Jose Sharks. And they <laughs> drug the team to win. So it, it seems like it's not just that he has the consistency, which I agree he does, Ryan, and he's he's able to play both sides of the puck, but he's got that little bit of clutch in him that Jamie had when he was at his best too. When Jamie was at his best, he was able to control the hockey game and drag his team to the finish line. Seems like Johnson's starting to show a little bit of that. We'll, we'll see if he can do that in the playoffs too. That's, that will be really exciting to see. And in terms of season MVP, it, it is a little biased because most of his best moments have been in the second half going down the reasons. stretch. Yeah. I mean, and you think about... Happen. You think about Duchesne again early. Duchesne mm -hmm. was clutch for like three months straight in the first beginning of the season. So it 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 is, I think the the bigger thing with Wyatt is it's surprising who it's coming from. You don't expect yeah. Wyatt Johnston, the youngest person on your roster, to come out and be the best at, towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. especially. Yeah. And if we're talking about MVP, we do still have to mention Jason Robertson leads this team in points by almost 15. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, no one noticed this. <laughs> <laughs> but but again, like like that's where I get to the difference, as you mentioned, Chris. Like Johnson just dominates games, and uh, you, you haven't seen that a ton from Robertson this year. Agreed. Um, and, and I really like Robertson as, as a player. I think he's a much better two way player than than people probably give him credit for. And yeah, he he's not going to have fifty goals a year, I guess. It, like, there's going to be some down years, but as you meant, he's still leading the team in scoring. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like, I just feel like Johnston makes people better around him. Uh, whereas Robertson, I don't think really does that because he's not really a driver of a line, so to speak. And that's where I would kind of give the the edge to 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 Johnston. But yeah, it's it's hilarious that Robertson is like a point per game, and <laughs> it's just like, yeah, yeah, he's been good. <laughs> but yeah. it's not 40 so it's not it's not pretty yeah totally agree. it's it's the it doesn't feel like he has that impact but he puts up points <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think the one thing that's missing from robertson's game right now is and, and we've talked about it guys is that ability in the playoffs we we've talked about it at nauseated uh because when they played last season against the wild he was just completely absent he it, he just was non-existent because that's not his style of game right the minnesota are the minnesota wild are basically we're gonna punch you in the face until you succumb and even though we're not a better team and we're not a more skillful team we're still gonna beat you to a bloody pulp and that's what they tried to do and the star said no and robertson really didn't get it going until the middle of the series against the seattle kraken and you know i will eat my words a little bit on that too and saying that and forgetting about Ro Robo because he is, it, it, it seems crazy to think, but I guess you could say he's had a quiet season. Like, like, like last year, there was all this talk about him and he's the new superstar in the NHL mm -hmm. and it, all the national media was talking about him. And this guy's going to score, you know, 50 goals one year or whatever. And then this year, it seems like he, he focused on his skating stride a little bit more, which is something that he uh, has kind of been, dogged on for the last couple of years and i don't think it's fair for that because he, he he i still think he's a great skater but like you mentioned joey he has become that full 200 foot player he is way more he's way better in his own zone and it's not that he was bad before it's just he's gotten better at that aspect of the game and he's focused on that aspect more of the game more so his point totals have taken a hit but you know what hasn't taken the hit is the star is the star's overall points in the mm -hmm. standings that has gotten better. And I think 
Robo with his uh, defensive play, uh, as well as leading this team by 15 points. Very yeah. quietly, I would say, because there's not a lot of people that are talking about him right yeah. now. A couple and, of things. Plus, no, 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 go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Okay. I was going to say a couple of things on that. I think the, the reason that, uh, like Joey was saying, the reason people don't really talk about him when he has that many points is because he's he's not controlling games the same way Ben or McDavid or now Johnston looks like he's doing. That's why you're not really talking about it that way. And then also, I think his points totals being down is also partially because the entire stars lineup is fantastic so when so many people are scoring goals it, 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 he's not going to have as much opportunity i feel like yeah and, and they don't use that top line like they used to a few years ago where they were yeah. out there like for entire games it felt like it, at some to. points yeah they don't need it, to anymore yeah yeah well yeah they were out there for a lot of offensive zone draws of course he was on the power play a lot and i i think too a lot of teams just take him out and, and mm-hmm. I think that's where you can give Minnesota credit last year. They just took him out of the game where, especially on the power play, because it was just a special teams galore in, in that series. Yeah. They're just like, we're going to make somebody other than 21 beat us. And, 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 and he can be effective that way. And I think that's what makes him a good player. He can be a decoy. Like he is a good, like by him scoring what 40 goals last season, that makes him a good player because teams are really trying to key in on and be like, Hey, don't let 21 beat him. And then Minnesota found out like everybody else beat them. But <laughs> you know, some teams will, will live with that. Or like, as long as it's not robo over there, that's cooking us. And uh, we'll, we'll take our chances against everybody else in the lineup. Now you don't really have that choice. It's, it's kind of pick your poison. <laughs> you better take away two or three guys and then see if the rest can beat you. Shoot, I would even argue at this point you could you could argue for nine. Yeah. Maybe all twelve. Cause that I mean, even that fourth line, like we've been talking about, is it, it like you don't want to mess with the fourth line. So good. So they, good. They've been not only have they been like eating minutes for the team when you know you need to they need to rest their top nine players, but while they're doing it and they're doing all these shifts and everything, they're also scoring. Like I mean, Fox had a three point night. That who would have thought that no offense to Roddick Fox, the the defensive center wizard that he is, he would be getting a three point night during the season. Nobody saw that coming. Let's let, let's be honest about that. So it, it, it's just fantastic. And you know, all the credit should go to Jim. Nell. like he has absolutely built this team. I, I don't want to say we rebuilt, but he, they basically rebuilt on the fly and found their next generation of players other than Miro outside of the top five. Mm-hmm. And, and like, it, I mean, we, we talk about it all the time, how fantastic it is. I mean, that like Ottinger, even though he was taken in the first round, it was in the later first round. Stankoven was taken in the second. Hintz was taken in the second. Jamie Benn was taken in the fifth round. And, and, and I mean, w- what's awesome about this team is that these guys, most of these guys are not top five picks. I think other than Miro, I think he's the only one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Harley even was like Johnson 14th was, or something like that. Right, you know. yeah. And and then Johnston, who has more goals than any other member of his draft class, was taken in at the 23rd spot. So, I mean, that, that's more than, than all three of the guys that were taken first, second, and third overall in that draft. So Jim Nill and specifically his scouting department deserves a lot of credit for that. So, it, I, I mean, there, this team is going to be very good for at least a decade and has the... Mm-hmm potential to go all the way this season but for the next decade they're going to make the playoffs it feels like that the, the, there's no quit in this team with the young players that they have yeah they, they extended their window by the way they drafted <laughs> because we were coming up and we, we still are like ben and sagan are, are going to be gone in the next you think five years you would suppose um and, and to be honest it looked like it may be earlier a few years ago with how it was going like okay like these guys are maybe on their way out and we're kind of stuck here, but you hit on some guys and you hit on some, some draft picks and it's like, Oh, okay. Uh, you can extend your, your window. And, and as you mentioned with Johnston, like that's just a miss by all the other 32 teams (laughs) within the NHL and, and COVID probably had something to do with that or not a lot of teams got to, 
to look at him. But uh, I mean, you look at the numbers he put up in the WHL, like um, they weren't like Bedard esque, but he was like on the tail of that. Like he was really good, but COVID kind of screwed that for him, I guess. And if he gets a full year, he probably goes within the top five. And as Razor has said multiple times on the broadcast, he's like clear cut, probably the number one pick. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. if you redrafted it, which is, which is pretty crazy. And yeah, I, I don't know how they continue to get values for these picks, but yeah, somebody somebody's got something. That, somebody's getting paid right, <laughs> and they're and they're doing it right. And the crazy thing about being able to build your your prospect pool this way is it's not like he ignored the current team either, because he, mm-hmm. he he went and made those trades at the deadline. He got Zuccarello, got Domi last year. It's not like he's ignoring the current team to build the prospect pool. He's doing both at the same time and doing both extremely well. And it's it's still yet to be said on some of those picks, like for example, Lundqvist, which. Please, Nils, like solidify your spot, man. Dick. Come on, we are all <laughs> rooting for you. But like, that's the first time that Jim Nell has given up a first round pick for anything. It feels mm-hmm. like, yeah. Definitely. And I, I don't want to. I don't want to say it's been a failure because he's because Nils is still young, and he's he still has his opportunities. And he, you can't expect Nils Lundqvist to be someone like Miro or Harley. Like Harley had a lot of the opportunities that Nils Lundqvist didn't. Like Harley was able to be the number one guy in Texas for a year. And he's been ridiculous since. And he's obviously the star's second best defenseman now. Like there's no doubt in anybody's mind that he's the star's second best defenseman. So, but uh, he's, that's the first time we've seen it. And Jim Nell has just been, he's been ridiculous. And this, the fans, the franchise, the players, everybody absolutely should be groveling at his feet and thanking him for the years of success that we are going to have after he retires. I don't think he's going to be around for, I mean, maybe give him two more years. And I think he hangs up the skates for as being the GM of the stars. Just pay him more. <laughs> Please. I think you we'll underestimate have- these old guys, man. Hockey gets them going. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I, mean, I guess they're <laughs> I guess Lou Amarello is still kicking yeah, the, up yeah. there in uh, New York. He's like, what, 80 something now? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, what I do want to do is I kind of want to move on to a, a little bit more of a topic that even more Stars fans are, are discussing amongst themselves on social media. And it's the Stars' ability to possibly win the President's Trophy. And the ability of the stars to win the president's trophy is not as scary compared to other teams. And I would argue for this reason, when we won the Stanley cup in 1999, that curse was still there. The, even over 20 years ago, I guess it was almost, Oh my gosh, it was 25 years ago now, but that has continued for the last decade or so. And there has only been one team in the last 10 years that has even made the conference final. Out of all the teams, none of them have made the Stanley Cup final. So what I want to ask you, is, is it's a two-part question, I guess, is what are the Stars' chances, you think, of finishing as the best team in the regular season in the NHL? And I guess the second one is, is if you if they do are able to make that and win that trophy, what are y'all's thoughts on that curse and maybe – that pressure that will come with being the best team in the NHL from the regular season going into the playoffs. Curses aren't real. <laughs> um, but I, think, I don't know. Uh, man. It's just like that Madden cover curse, that Madden cover curse. <laughs> That's so, true. <laughs> it is pretty freaky. Um, it, I, I think it's going to be tough for the stars to win the president's trophy. We've talked about how the stars end of the season schedule is very easy, especially compared to the rest of the schedule of the season. The Rangers is easier. I, I don't think Way they're playing easier. a playoff team for the remainder. You know their, games? their final matchups are against Pittsburgh, New Jersey, Detroit, and then Montreal. Which Pittsburgh might be kind of hard because they're, they're I trying don't to think fight that's for as spot, easy as y'all so. think it is. Pittsburgh and Detroit are still fighting though. Yeah, they're so still fighting for a that'll spot. That'll be interesting. Yeah, those will be like and and two. You got to maybe factor in like New York maybe won't care some of those nights. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Just because they're kind of in and like those will be like desperation games for Detroit, depending on how the next week goes. Yeah, but there's definitely a chance for the Stars to do it. And as far as pressure goes, I think this team's leadership from the coach to the top 
players. I mean, we've got two captains on this team with Joe mm-hmm. Pavelski and Jamie Ben. And three with Suter, honestly. Three with Suter. That's true. <laughs> yeah, three with Suter. And all these guys have been there, done that. And I think they lead this team so well night in, night out. And they have so the whole team has playoff experience too. Like even the young guys. I mean, everybody here knows what the goal is and knows what's at stake and pretty consistently seem put together this season. So I wouldn't worry really at all about any presence trophy pressure being added. They've got all the pressure that they need. They've got three guys that need Stanley Cups before their careers end. That's all the pressure that I think is going to be on their shoulders. And uh, I'm not infatuated with the president's uh, trophy, but I think they want it. I just feel like that's kind of the vibe in the locker room. I just feel like they want it because yeah. Pete DeBoer t- talks about it all the time too, where he wants home ice advantage. He wants game seven at home if it gets to that point and that can be big and they got that in the second round and maybe that was the deciding factor uh, against Seattle. And the only reason they got it is because Seattle beat the brakes off of, <laughs> of Colorado. So I, I think, I think they want it to some degree where they, they guarantee themselves having home ice. And of course it's, if you even get to the, to the, the Stanley cup final, but I, I think they want it because they do want game sevens on home ice. And I think that proves to be um, a big factor, even though home ice, doesn't really seem to to bear out the statistics that it once was, but game seven at home is different than game one. Like yep. it, it is much different, and I think it does have something to do. And, and mm-hmm. some players have definitely said that they're looking at the standings and they're pushing. So that's mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. true. The the other thing I'll say about the curse itself is that it feels a little different this year because there are like five or six teams with all of their names in the hat for what could, who could be the president's trophy winner at the end of the year. And there's only like five or six games left for each team. (laughs) Yeah. It's not like someone's coasting into it this year. If someone's, someone's going to win it, they're going to be playing pretty good at the end. Maybe like a team with eight straight wins. Who knows? Mm -hmm. That's true. And that is, that's a good point there, James as well. And and the fact that last year, I mean, Boston, there were, there was no doubt that, how ridiculous yeah. Boston was playing. They were the prison trophy and, winner in January. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. No, they just, yeah. And they didn't have to play meaningful hockey for like a month and uh-huh. a half. When you think about it, and maybe that seeped into their game, the playoffs, like <laughs> that is a real thing. It would be different as, as you guys mentioned, if a team's like hot coming in and they actually want it with some like merit almost. <laughs> and that's not to say that, I mean, they had the best regular season in history, but, um, but yeah, it just felt like a month. You're just kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like it's a Tuesday night. Like yep. can't wait for the playoffs <laughs> and then Florida comes in and they just bite everybody's kneecaps off. <laughs> yep. right. And uh, I really want to jump in on something that James said, and it, it, it's kind of not fair because there's no way to quantify this with any kind of data or anything other than looking at what has happened in the past. Right. So there are players on this team that have won Stanley cups and there are team, there are players on this team who have gotten awfully, awfully close. And we, we've seen Joe Pavelski in 2016 with San Jose Sharks. He's not hanging them up until he gets a sh- another shot at it. He is absolutely not. That's my belief. I think he'll play till 45 if he needs to in order to get, have that chance. It's, it seems like he's playing this good got game. Ryan. Yeah, that's true. And then, uh, then you got Jamie Ben, who we all remember at the end of that documentary that Jeff Totes put together that was the hardest thing to watch absolutely as as a stars fan that was the hardest thing to watch to just you know watch him and think about how close he was to getting that ultimate goal that he's always wanted to have and then the looking at this and also realizing that players like Suter before last year had never made this the conference final like in this this is a guy that's been around for 1600 games like ridiculous and then and then to really jump on what james said it's got a different feel to it it's absolutely got a different feel to it you've got you have the players now you have the guys in the lineup that can make a difference you have your jamie ling and brenner and and Wyatt Johnston, and maybe even a Yerry Lettinen in that. You've got your Rope Hintz, who is your Mike Madano. You've got your Joe Pavelski that was Guy Carboneau back in the day. You, you've also got guys like Mason Marchment, who was like Mike Keene back in the day, who could punch somebody if he needed to be. You've got your number one defenseman, like like Sergei Zubov and Miro Haskinen. You've got the secondary guy, Daryl Sador, 
in Thomas Harley. Everything just seems to, and and I should also mention Jay Gottinger, who is playing probably the best hockey of his of his uh, his regular season right now, and that's your Ed Belfort. So when when you look at how it lines up and everything, it there it seems to line up so well. And then you realize that the guys who had to endure that 2020 bubble playoff run and had to go all the way through those two and a half months, whatever it was, of not getting to see their families and only getting to see them via technology and the grueling of all of that just to fall up two games short. I don't see I don't see that I, 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 again biasly. I don't see that happening again with this team. The way they're constructed and the, the way that they're put together. I just the feeling is completely different. So I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> nice monologue. No, I, I mean Sorry. absolutely I, well, it just feels like they're they're taking steps, right? They've just taken steps. They they won around, you know, a few years ago. Um, and then Ottinger got his feet wet, of course, in that Calgary series. And then and they won two and they get to the conference. It just it feels perfect. Like the, the stars are starting to align almost where it's like, this is the next step. Like, go ahead and win it. And as, yeah, three guys. I mean, that's all the motivation they need is, you know, Ben and, and, and Suter and Pavelski. Like, I don't think the president's trophy is going to matter to them. Like, they're, they're, there's enough pressure on them to, to leave a legacy to some degree of like, we, we brought a cup to Dallas or, uh, you know, I won my first Stanley cup and now I'm like a solidified hall of famer type of thing. And, and Pavelski already is just with the, <laughs> the, the numbers he's put up in his career, but look, they, they know what the, the next step is and it just, it feels perfect. <laughs> and it does feel like everything's kind of coming to this moment where hopefully at the end of uh, June or whatever it is that um, they, they hoist that bad boy. Agreed. It's just we're, we're we're telling emotional uh, yes. uh, uh emotional right. stories. Uh, I'll, uh, I it's like an epic rant. I I was not planning on doing. Oh, that, I loved it. Yeah. No, I'm gonna oh. do it. With, I'm gonna do it with Jamie Ben too, because even even more so Jamie Ben than the other two guys that we've talked about needing a cup. Jamie Ben was here before Gagliardi bought this hockey team, and th- this team is really built by Jamie Ben when you think about it. I mean, he, he's the start of this era of Dallas Stars hockey. He started when this team was not good at all, and he's been here the entire time, and it, it's really building up to this. I mean, you talk about the bubble playoffs where he got as close as he could, I mean, and then his team just fell apart around him just with the injuries and everything, just trying to get through that. And then even last year, I mean, he got that close again, and he probably felt that same passion, like, I'm not going to let that happen again. I don't want to feel that way. And he he pushes too far. And he does that terrible play and gets suspended for a game and gets his team in real trouble. And what a redemption arc this would be to come back mm-hmm. from both of those things to, to to win it here when he's got this super team constructed around him. He's had his, his benaissance, like Razors called it, and he's still playing so great, as good as, like, these past few years, he's been real similar to how he was playing in his Art Ross years. And it, it's just such a perfect uh, character arc for just Jamie Ben in general. If you want a kind of crazy s- stat wise, between Jamie Ben, uh, Ryan Suter, stat. and Joe Pavelski, they have played 3,870 games in the NHL so far. And none of them have a cop. That is insane. How many, say that number again, James, one more time. What is it? 3,870. It's <laughs> a lot. If you, divide that, yeah. if you divide that by 82, that's 47 seasons. <laughs> it's 47 seasons. It's a lot of minutes that's on those long. bodies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what I can say that'll make us feel a little bit better? And we can also take a shot at a certain fan base. That's still not longer than the Toronto Maple Leafs haven't without yeah. winning a cup. <laughs> so okay uh it's getting late guys i think that's a good stopping place but we still got one more thing to do let's do our who cares segment for the evening we had to prepare joey for this one because he's yeah <laughs> it's a little bit of a weird one for for people who come on the show so uh whose idea was it i forgot whose it was it was james. mine james okay, yeah. we are doing types of noodles noodle types shapes Shapes, whatever Shapes, you want to call noodles, them. Whatever you want to call them. Yep. 
Okay, who's going first? It has to be one of us because we're not we're not gonna make Joey go first as our guest. I have no idea how to make this funny. My, I, I pick <laughs> I pick bow ties. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the funniest your, noodle i can think of is that your number third chris that's my number third your number third is bow tie pasta bow tie pasta okay james you want me to go or you, you got one um i'll go okay uh, uh, my number third is going to be lasagna the lasagna noodle because i mean that's just a solid pick you make just a solid thing of pasta noodles with that Solid pasta. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pasta noodles. Not pasta, but pasta. 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 Yeah, exactly. Great explanation, okay. James. You're exactly. Welcome. Um, dude, I don't even know what to go with. Uh, there's so many types. I mean, there, you have a lot to yeah. choose from. Yeah, I know. And yeah, and Joey was like, "Well, I got. I'm gonna have to look some up." And I was just like, <laughs> "Have you looked up how many different types of pasta there there's are? Way right? too many, actually. It's a stupid amount. Yeah, get your chart out. Yeah, I have it pulled up on my other screen, and I was doing it while the countdown was going on. I was like, "We need an answer, Ryan." Oh I actually had to. I actually had to like. I was like, "Wow." Okay. Anyways, uh, I guess my number three. I'll have to be lame, and I'll just go with fettuccine. Fettuccine is my number three. I, I really enjoy fettuccine Alfredo. That's like one of my go-tos whenever I go to any kind of Italian restaurant. And for some reason, I always have to get fettuccine Alfredo when I go to Olive Garden, and it has to be with the chicken parmesan. So I don't know why that that, that combination that I really like that combination. So fettuccine is my number three. Well, speaking All of right, Olive Garden, yeah, I'm I'm. I'm stoked to make my debut here on this segment. Um, this <laughs> uh, speaking of Olive Garden, shout out to the breadsticks, by the way, they're phenomenal. Uh, oh, yeah. But uh, since since we're going with pastas here, and um, I usually get this pasta if I go to Olive Garden, I, I do rigatoni with like a meat sauce or something like that. So I'll do rigatoni, a little thicker noodle with a, a bigger hole, I guess. And um, yeah, so that that'll be my number three pick. Chris, penne regat. That's the penne with the lines on it. I don't know. That's what I get at the grocery store. <laughs> I guess yes, there's a difference. I'm not that's, Italian. That's exactly though. what I was thinking. I was like, I didn't <laughs> even know there was a difference. All right, James. All right, um, my number second. I'm gonna go with angel hair. I really like angel hair for some reason. It's Terrible very choice. thin. It's <laughs> it's a light thing for me to eat. I don't like heavy foods, hey, and sir. angel hair is the perfect embodiment of the light noodle. So. My number second, is, and I'll be lame, and y'all are gonna make fun of me, Christian James. But the, what you, which they always do, by the way, Joey, they always make fun of me, even if I have good choices. Like that's because I don't, you deserve you don't have to be choices. made fun of. Y'all yeah. shut up, okay? Shut up. We have a guest here, okay? Uh, my number two is macaroni. I'm gonna go with that's macaroni terrible. because it's it. When I was little, obviously, Chris and James, y'all both know, I was extremely picky. Like I didn't. I was the hot dog, hamburger, peanut butter and jelly kind of kid. I did not venture off at all from it, from my basic food groups, which included basically those three things. And the fourth thing, mac and cheese, which and by the way, shout out to my wife, Amanda, who may be listening through the door or not. Uh, her baked mac and cheese is the best thing ever. She makes it every single like Thanksgiving feast, Christmas lunch, whatever. And I always ask her. To, to make it for those special occasions. So that's my number two. So Joey? Alrighty. Move into my number two. Um, pretty basic, but I'll just go with, with penne. I think it's really versatile. Uh, you can do it with anything. You get big <laughs> ziti, any type of sauce you want. Like I said, you can put cheese on it. You can do the feta. You can do Alfredo. You can do marinara. I just feel like it's versatile. You can do chicken sausage meatballs you name it can't go wrong just a simple penne pasta is is my number two a well-rounded player well and <laughs> yes. you know what else he's learned though guys chris and james he he's explaining like he, he has a reason for it elaborate just, man you gotta make the case the seventh command <laughs> i know i know he's already he's already learned so quick yeah okay chris you're number one what you got uh Alphabet soup noodles. <laughs> oh, I did not see that one coming. I figured out how to make it funny, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I should have expected that from you, Chris. I should have. 
They're pretty good. You know, Chris has enlightened me. I'm changing my number one. My number one is SpaghettiO noodles. Let's go. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, blah, blah. Those O's vary. They oh, vary in they size. Do. They do. They vary noticed? in size. You can stack them on top of each other. It's great. I don't yeah, know if I've ever like had little... SpaghettiOs. Don't try. No, them. don't. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> no, make I'm a SpaghettiO you know, volcano. It is the most disgusting <laughs> food on the planet. SpaghettiOs are disgusting. That's true. Absolutely. Mm. But they're great. Their okay. Are spectacular. Uh, all right. Whose turn is it? Yours. Oh, it's mine. It's mm. mine. Duh. Okay. Uh, my number one, and I'm gonna be lame, but this is it's the only way to go. Spaghetti. Spaghetti has to be the number one choice. It's the real only number one choice. Everywhere you go, that's like the traditional meal that you get when you go to an Italian restaurant. Other than maybe fettuccine alfredo, which was my number three. But and and again, it, you can't go wrong with with spaghetti noodles. And I've even known people who I, I think it's weird. I don't know why they do this, but they they eat uh, spaghetti noodles by themselves and melted butter. Have you all ever heard that before? I do that. Well, that's good. That's you do that. So okay. I've done butter noodles. I usually don't use yeah. like the the normal spaghetti ones, but butter noodles are like yeah. the thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. up right. some noodles, dude. Especially when you're balling on a budget, was- man. Yeah, yeah oh, you've I'm obviously sure. been rich, Ryan. <laughs> Shoot, as a teacher, rich, I ain't rich. Rich teacher. <laughs> okay, Joey, you get to end off the segment. What's your number one? Yeah, uh, spaghetti's a great choice. Probably a surefire number one pick, but um, I, I have to go with bow tie. Bow tie's yeah. always just, I don't know why. <laughs> it's always been like a king for me when I when I was young. Uh, Jason's Deli is a place I always, and still to this day, I get the kids bow tie pasta and meatballs the kids is a perfect portion for myself you get the drink on top of it you don't have to spend the extra three dollars or whatever it is for the adult drink so uh, i i go kids bow tie pasta and meatballs that's that's like my all-time favorite so that'll be my number one that's a great hack i gotta use that Mm-hmm. I, I think Joey schooled us at our own segment today. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, man, uh, Joey, thank you so much, man, for coming on the show. It's been an absolute blast and a pleasure having you come on. Uh, if, if you don't follow him or listen to any of his stuff with Locked On Stars, it's absolutely fantastic. He does a great job, and he there is a daily episode that he puts out there uh, Monday through Friday. Check it out anywhere you get your podcast, just like you would our own. Seriously, go and listen to his content. It's fantastic. And if you happen to be in the Chippewa area, which yeah, stop I by. <laughs> no idea if we have fans who, yeah. listening to the show that do, mm-hmm. but we have fans who are from like Australia and the UK yeah. and stuff like that. But if you're out there, go out and go say hi to Joey because he's fantastic. Joey, thanks again, man, for ha- coming on the show. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you for those those kind words. I I, I loved coming on and, and just shooting the shooting the breeze with you guys. So hopefully we can maybe do it again sometime. I, I'm a great I'm a great person to to call if you just need to fill time. So I, I can just talk <laughs> forever. So <laughs> I talk too much. So if you guys are running out of ideas, man, just hop on and I'll just I'll just spew for for 30 minutes or so and we can have some fun again. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh Chris and James. Any final thoughts? Let's go win number no? nine. Let's do it. Thank you, everyone, who has been listening live. We've had up to, believe it or not, we've had 63 people listening live all at the same time here this evening. Y'all are crazy. It's a Friday evening. What are y'all doing? Like, we'll go, go, yeah, go have <laughs> yeah. fun. What are you doing? Listen to a podcast, that, not even a podcast, a live stream on a it's Friday recorded. night. recorded. It will be there yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> but, Again, there's even more of you that are listening later on the podcast side, on YouTube, wherever it may be. We appreciate you guys as always. And I I say it every single time, but we never would have thought four years ago that this is the kind of community that we would be building. We love the Stars community, the hardcore fandom that we have. And even though we may be small, we are absolutely mighty in the amount of love that we have for this team. So let's hope and continue that the Stars are going to be doing well and they keep going on this win streak and they get their final ultimate prize of winning the Stanley Cup. So thank you to DraftKings Sportsbook as always. And alongside Joey, James, and Chris, my name is Ryan. We will catch you guys on the flip side. Hope you guys have a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you guys are listening. And we really hope you guys have a great day tomorrow.
and let's go stars.